Hey everybody. So I've been fiddling around with a filter and uh, this is one of my uh, one of my test filters and um, it's effective but it's not as effective as I'd like it to be um, and my test setup here is probably not the greatest. I've got probably a little bit too much coax um, but um, nevertheless this filter works just fine. Um, it just doesn't um, uh, you know, roll off quite quite as much as I would like it to do. This is a um, uh, a Butterworth, and I probably should have gone with something else, really. But um, I wanted to give it a shot anyway. So um, these are um, 0.4 microhenry and uh, 0.1 microhenry uh, caps. Are uh, 65 puff? Um, are they? No, they're 68. Um, so, um, this filter actually is fairly effective, um, it, um, the, oh, the only nuisance, of course, is that it attenuates, um, you know, the 35 megahertz to a, you know, to a level that I don't like. I mean, any, any of these filters are going to attenuate, uh, whatever you put through them. Um, it just depends on, um, you know, the frequency of, uh, of whatever you want. This is, of course, a high pass. Um, so anything uh, roughly around 30 megahertz, I wanted to, to um, uh, you know, to discard, and um, it it you know it rolls off, and it's it's very uniform um, from what I can see. Um, it's just I'm, I've got to uh, to tweak this a little bit. Maybe I should go with something else. Um, I'm not really up on my filter design, so I need to I need to go and read some more. Um, but um, just to show you what this does, um, this is, and I need to turn out lights because we can't see the screen. So this is, what frequency is this? I could just turn around and look at the signal generator, uh, 67 megahertz. And you know, negative 6 dB. Um, how much of that's the coax? Probably half, um, because I've got like a five foot piece of coax on either end of this thing. So yeah, this probably half of it's the coax, but um, you know, and it's not the greatest coax in the world. It's just, it, it, it it's just, you know, crappy. Um, I've got a uh, spool of coax in the car, incidentally, that somebody gave me um, that I need to, uh, to pull out of the car and um, you know, take a peek at it. So anyway, this is the uh, 67 megahertz, and see um, that it pretty much it, it's fairly flat, you know, all the way up to 100 megahertz, which is what I would have expected this filter to do. Um, and it starts to take a dive right there, which is um, 45 megahertz, and it starts to slope down. That's um, 35 megahertz there, so um, you know I need this to slope uh, a little bit. Uh, I need this to be around 30 megahertz. I need to tweak this a little bit, but you see, there's my 35 megahertz, and it's you know 12 dB. Um, you know, probably you know in reality, it's probably seven or eight. Um, and I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time I'm doing this. I'm probably making a me making a mess of this. Um, and so um, you'd see it, it it pretty much takes a dive. I mean, it it takes a dive. And um, that's I mean from you know the uh, 35 megahertz there down to um, you know that's 19 right there. Uh, I mean, it, it's a really sharp, a really sharp, and you see the rest of it's just down in there in the noise. You know, 7 megahertz, you know, that's 10 megahertz right there, and it's just practically down there in the noise. So, um, it's fairly effective uh, at what it's doing. It needs tweaking. Um, more than likely, um, just to get my lights back on here. More than likely, I need some variable caps in there. These are fixed value caps, and I really need to get some uh, some variable caps. And 
and, and I can probably dial this in really good to get the exact values that I want. Um, but um, I probably should have gone with a different filter uh, design. And uh, um, since I'm not up on my filters, I need to, you know, piddle around with it. But this, this, this works. Um, and obviously the test method, while not the greatest in the world, it's, it's effective. You get to pretty much see what the filter's doing. Um, it would be nice if it was persistent, um, like if I had a tracking generator where it, you, you, would, you would look at the screen and you would see this line and where it's going. Um, but this method works okay, um, you know, just to get, to get an idea of what it's doing. Um, I pretty much see what's going on, so, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could get a piece of paper and throw it on the screen there and then, um, you know, put the dots on there and then connect the dots and you could have your, your pattern, but that's really somewhat unnecessary. But just, I'm curious now as to what this thing does in the high end, so let's just, let's just, uh, uh, full span this sucker. And, uh, there's our, damn it, lights. <laughs> there's our full span and that's 12 megahertz and of course the 12 megahertz is this little blip down here um it will just go up and you can see that it's pretty much um seems to be working okay all the way through actually nah, it's starting to attenuate a little bit there there we go we're taking a dive that's um 700 megahertz. This filter wasn't designed to be poking around at 700 megahertz, but just sort of a curiosity question, you know, what's going on with this? Um, now we're at 1 gigahertz. Um, yeah, we're, we're approaching uh, 1.3, and uh, signal generator maxes out at 1.35 gigahertz. So, um, you know, it's it's working. It's passing all the eye stuff like it should be. Um, it's just when you get down to the bottom there, this is uh, 100, 70, 60, 40, um, and, it, and it dives off right there. That's its um, that's its range. So yeah, it works. Um, Variable caps in there. I bet I could tweak this sucker down pretty good. Um, I only, unfortunately, I don't have any variable caps. I've only got fixed value caps. So I really don't do a whole lot of this stuff. I don't really have any. So um, I need to either go and try to cannibalize something for some if I have anything. Um, but what I'm probably just going to end up doing as soon as I'm done with this, uh, I'm just going to go hit up... Um, DigiKey, and I'm just going to get a whole freaking bunch of them and, uh, you know, move on from there. So, you know, th this way I can I can really tweak this down. Because in order to, uh, you know, effectively make these filters, it'd be nice to have tunable components. I mean, and these, these um, inductors, you can pretty much just, you know, wind them and stuff them in an LCR meter and see what they are, and then you can tweak them a little bit. Um... And you know you're in the ballpark. And um, my thought was, is when I get these things, get this thing all tweaked how I want it, that I would just snip the legs and stuff it in an LCR meter and see what it measured. This way I don't try not to disturb the spread of the coil uh, to try to get a value. So, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if that's a bad way of, of doing business, but... Um, you know, the only other way that I can think of of tuning an inductor is just by shorting the um, uh, the windings together uh, on this. And I know that some old amplifiers, like old tube amps, you'd see them in there where they tune the inductors by just shorting the the windings together. Um, you know, which works, but um, you know, these inductors, I was able to wind them pretty spot on, um, just you know by trial and error i mean you can you, you get the course you get the course uh you do the math on it you figure out you know the um you know the, the gauge of the wire and all that kind of good stuff and then you get an idea how many turns you know um and uh 
you get, you get really close and I was able to get these like really close just just right off the bat so um, I just need to uh, if I had some variable caps I bet I would be able to dial this sucker in real good so I, I think my caps are my problem that's what it is because my math was is for 65 uh, 0.5 uh, picofarad caps but I had 68s so I stuck them in and it works um, it's just changed the frequency by several megahertz which it should so um, variable caps here we come so anyways I hope you guys found that interesting uh, if you got any tips for me uh, I'm all ears uh, so catch you next time